As we move further into 2025, there's really a threat on the horizon. It's not getting much attention right now, but it has really serious ramifications going forward, especially in this new year. Let's get into it today. And a very good morning to all of you. And uh, I'm not one normally to ring alarm bells, but having spent 22 years in clinical medicine, albeit pushing paperwork, but even pushing paperwork, you'd be surprised the uh, the amount of data you gather in your own mind and the things that you learn in looking and coding diagnoses and things like that. And one thing I really understand is that viruses are potentially very, very deadly. And I've known through the course of those 22 years that I've worked, plenty of people that passed away because of viral illnesses, different than bacterial illnesses. And it's important to, you know, right now that H1N5, which is the avian influenza strain, aka bird flu, is really making a remarkable footprint across uh, North America now to the extent that a lot of uh, bird flocks have had to be destroyed, particularly chickens and things like that. But also there are increasing numbers of people and animals that are being affected. And well, we had our first H1N5 death down in Louisiana. I'm afraid it's not going to be the last one. So today I just wanted to come out and tell you that uh, although they speak of vaccines and things like that, you have to understand some of these vaccines are from 2007, 2010. Even the most recent one of them is years outdated. And of course, uh, it, of course, viruses mutate, they change. So we really have no assurance if you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, big deal if I get it, so what, you know. I enjoy feeding the birds, and if something happens, uh, you know, maybe I'll go get the uh, the H1N5 vaccine. It's not that simple. We don't have uh, really a uh, proven vaccine at the current time that is going to be efficacious uh, upon this virus. Can one pre-produce? No doubt it can. But remember, viruses are moving targets, targets of mutation. They change all the time. And it's important that you be aware of some of the steps and, uh, uh, that, that you really want to take to heart right now. Uh, number one, there has been a very rapid pathway of uh, infection from from animals that prey upon birds that have died of the H1N5 virus. And this has been moving through the, uh, particularly among, mainly among mammals. So it's, you know, they're trying to do everything that they can to make sure that that spread doesn't occur. It's not something that you and I can control. Number two is that uh, pasteurized milk has been, unpasteurized milk has been a really, uh, really rapid pathway too. There's been cats that have died and I think three cats were infected just at the end of last week, only one of which uh, survived. So you need to be very careful. I know there's a lot of people that advocate for the nutritional aspects of whole unpasteurized milk, but, the, but there's always the danger of contaminations and contamination and i'm always i guess i shouldn't be by now i'm so surprised by a society that seems so intent in at times and going backwards with lower vaccination rates particularly among young uh adolescents and young adults here in california and now this turn towards unpasteurized uh milk it, it seems to be a gigantic leap backwards for health benefits that uh, cannot be uh, proven. So number two is stay away from unpasteurized uh, milk products and dairy products. Okay, it's very, very critical. That pasteurization does a lot to make the dairy products safe. The third thing is to be very careful if you're dealing with birds particularly wild birds, and there's a lot of very kind people. I've been sent pictures over the years and continue to get 
uh, sent pictures from subscribers that have uh, aviaries and uh, flocks of homing pigeons, and they also have uh, uh, wild birds that they feed and things like that. You have to be very, very careful doing things like filling up feeders and uh, outdoor feeders. Make sure where you wear gloves and make sure that you wear a mask. And when you come in, make sure to wash your hands thoroughly, okay? And also use a hand sanitizer that is at least 40% alcohol in it. The last thing that you need to really understand in the way of, of uh, prevention is we often will see, especially around a neighborhood, there'll be birds that appear to be injured. They're on the ground uh, and our hearts go out to them. You know, pick up a bird, put it in a shoebox, put a little blanket around it and help it recover, feed it with an eyedropper. That's exceedingly dangerous because that's an easy, easy path of transmission through a, a sick bird to a mammal such as a human being. So you really want to avoid that. The best thing that you can do is call animal control. They can pick up the animal and, well, do some testing to see if it is safe or not. This influenza H1N5 is no joke. I remember back in the day in, in Asia, this thing raged in some communities uh, over there 20, 25 years ago. And it wasn't a pleasure cruise, I can tell you that. So make sure to take steps to per, uh, protect yourself. Stay away from bird, bird droppings, things like that. Be very careful of, oh, I don't like these bird droppings or on this, that, or the other thing. You know, better to keep your distance. Use a hose, spray it down or whatever, but don't get in there. Uh, stirring all that up. It can be very, very problematic. Hey, forewarned is forearmed. And I think I have somebody in my particular subscriber base right now that's suffering mightily with this uh, infection that was a uh, uh, partaker of unpasteurized milk. I don't know. I mean, I'm the, you know, I haven't, I haven't heard the, the final thing, but just beware. All right. If you're not subscribed, this is a good time to ask you to subscribe and hit the bell for all notifications. I try to touch topics. They might be a little controversial. They're usually way ahead of the curve, which is not a bad thing. So if you enjoy being a little ahead of the curve and talking about the upcoming things in the, that'll probably dominate the news cycle, well, we have another one right here, okay? Make sure to protect yourself. Stay away from where wild flocks are in zoos and wildlife sanctuaries and things like that, okay? They're very, very aggressive pathways for the spreading of viruses. All right. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Once again, subscribe. Hit that bell for all notifications. And your thumbs up are appreciated. Thank you, everybody.